We've had a lot of people ask us about the fate of Car. You know, the night automated roving robot, Kit's evil twin that we first see in the episode Trust Doesn't Rust, and then again in the third season in Kit vs. Car. Today we're going to break down exactly how many cars were used to depict the evil prototype in each episode, and the fate of each one of those cars. Now sit down and be quiet, you inferior production line copy, and maybe you'll learn something. <clears throat> Sorry. The Night Automated Roving Robot first appeared in the 10th episode of the series to be produced, Trust Doesn't Rust. Since this first appearance was so early in the series, the production only had four Trans Ams and a dune buggy, which in reality was a rubber shell jump car called the Fliver Car. So only those five vehicles were able to be used, both as kit and as car. So as you can imagine, it was not easy to film that episode. For Trust Doesn't Rust, they use all five of those vehicles mentioned above as car. And because car was visually identical to kit in this episode, Remember, he didn't have silver two-tone paint job, didn't have a yellow scanner. It was very easy for them to switch between kit and car while filming scenes. So let's take a closer look. We'll start with Trust Doesn't Rust. Car number one, the hero car. When Tony and Rev wake up the next morning after breaking car out of the Night Museum of Technology, they are in the hero car. This car is easily identified by the bulkier Michael Chaffee designed overhead console that we see through the window, as well as a camera tow bar receiver underneath the front bumper. Car number two, the backup to the hero car. Bonnie is kidnapped from the Foundation for Law and Government, and we see them leaving in this car. This one is easy to distinguish from the other cars as well, because it has a boxier overhead console, as opposed to the Michael Chaffee style angular overhead console. This car also has a camera tow bar receiver under the front nose. This is one of the two cars that we currently own. Car number three, the general purpose stunt car. Remember when car destroys the ringmaster? Yep, that's this stunt car. This one has a boxy overhead console very similar to the backup to the hero car, but it has no camera tow bar receiver and we can also see seat belts. And that's how you distinguish this car. Unfortunately, it was destroyed during the filming of the series and no longer exists. Car number four, the roll caged acrylic window jump car. We see car jumping over the police barricade in the climax of this episode and then driving erratically through the streets and that is this car. This one is very easy to tell from the other cars as it has a full roll cage in it and you can also tell that it does not have glass for the front, side, and rear windows but instead it's acrylic. Unfortunately, this car doesn't exist any longer either. Car number five, the Fliver car. When car jumps over Kit right before jumping over the police barricade, that's the Fliver car. Remember, the Fliver car was a dune buggy chassis wearing a Trans Am body shell. We do have reason to believe that this vehicle, at least the dune buggy portion, survived past filming, although its current whereabouts are unknown. All right, let's move over to season three's kit vs. car and examine those vehicles and their fates. Now by the third season, the production had a plethora of Trans Ams to choose from, mainly due to the infamous train derailment of 1982. And if you wanna know more about that, check out our commentary on the final verdict episode and you'll get a lesson on the train derailment. In kit vs. car alone, nine Trans Ams were used eight of which were used as car. So which ones were car and which ones survived? Look, don't get your alpha capacitors in a twist. We'll go over that now. Car number one, 
This is the same car that we called the backup to the hero car in season one. However, by season three, its role had changed to a more multifaceted use. I guess we can call it the trick car. This car had the extendable driver's seat that we saw in Nightmares and A Good Night's Work, and it was also one of the two high traction drop down cars from Speed Demons. In fact, in Kit vs. Car, it's used as car in the scene at the beginning of the episode where he's escaping from his sandy grave. If you'll notice, the high traction drop downs are engaged in these scenes. Now, as stated earlier, this is our car, and yes, some of the high traction drop down apparatus is still intact. And yes, we are going to make it fully functional once again. This one was never painted the two-tone black and silver. Car number two, the roll-caged acrylic window jump car. This is actually a different jump car than was used in Trust Doesn't Rust. That car met its fate during filming, so this car was its replacement. We see this vehicle used as car when he turbo boosts through some barrels on the back of a truck. This car was painted the silver two-tone color. Sadly, it does not exist any longer. Car number three, the original hero car. Kit First Car was actually the first episode of the third season to be filmed, and the original hero car was still intact in this episode. After this episode was filmed, and after the next one that was produced, which was Lost Night, after those two were filmed, the original hero car was gutted and turned into the right hand blind drive car. But fortunately, it was able to be used here as car needed to still have the two TV dash from previous years. This car also was never painted two tone black and silver, and yes, it still exists today. Car number four, the hardtop stunt car. This is the same car that we just revealed in our Chariot of Gold episode review, and it is used as car when he exits the beach onto the highway. The fate of this car is unknown, and there's a decent chance that it's still out there, somewhere. It definitely survived after the infamous Wrecking Ball Day, where most of the Knight Rider cars were destroyed. This one also was never painted two-tone black and silver. Car number five. This one's a relatively new to the series stunt car, at this time anyways. It had no tow bar, had a rear defrost, had T-tops. This car was only used in a brief scene and was painted the two-tone black and silver. This car was one of the very few manual transmission cars the show had, and later it had its engine removed and was used as the gutted kit that they pull out of the acid pit in Junkyard Dog. It then later became the transforming Super Pursuit car, the one with no engine and with all the hydraulics that activated all the flaps and, and extensions. But more on that another day. This car was crushed when the series ended. Car number six, another newer stunt car for the time, one that lasted until the end of the series. It had a T-top, stock dashboard, rear defrost, and unique tan-colored A-pillar trim. This is the only car that had that tan-colored A-pillar trim, by the way. This is the car that crashed into the semi and tried to suffocate Mandy. It also had the two-tone black and silver paint job, and it too sadly was crushed when the series ended. Car number seven, the left-hand blind drive car. By season three, the show had a dedicated driver's side blind drive car. We see it being used as car in a few scenes, but it was never painted two-tone. It was also crushed when the show ended. And finally, car number eight, yet another stunt car used in a brief scene when car crashed through the bridge pillar. This one was also painted two-tone, and yes, it was crushed as well when the show ended. So there you go. Out of the eight cars that depicted car in Kidverse Car, four of them had the silver two-tone paint job, the others did not. And sadly, none of the cars that were painted the two-tone exist today. So what did you think? Did you like this deep dive into the fate of all the cars? Do you have any other questions we didn't address about car? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.
And now, while we listen to Joe's selection of Knight Rider music that we received directly from Don Peak himself, we'd like to thank these Patreon supporters. Look at you guys scrolling up the screen to my right. Wait a minute, how can you tell which side is my right since you can't see me because I'm not on camera? Oh well, you know what I mean. We are featuring these fine supporters at our Knight Rider prop restorer level. Thank you very much for your support. And for those of you at the Knight Rider History Hunter level, we're recognizing you right now in the description. Now, if you enjoyed seeing this golden nugget of Knight Rider history being rescued from obscurity, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support would empower us to bring you even more of these historical nuggets. We are the Knight Rider Historians. Till next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.